Ann Morrison here, Artistic Director of Sarah Solo Productions. And if you've been following us, you know that we put together a Sarah Solo TV on YouTube channel uh, to keep our solo hearts alive by doing our own living room theater from pieces we've done from the past. Pretty much it's been the Annie Morrison show, sorry about that. But last week I got to introduce back to you all Lynn Burnfield, who had been in our Sarah Solo Festival for two years. And that was quite fun. Um, she was having a hard time giving her own introduction, so I created an introduction for her. I like it so much, I'm going to introduce all of our solo artists when they come back in. And this week, we're going to enjoy Joseph Galata. Joseph has done solo theater throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. He is a whiz at incorporating ethnic dance, storytelling, physical theater, and original music into all of his solo theater. His productions focus on social injustice and healing from trauma grief. Joseph is a television and radio journalist. We at Sarasola had Joseph in two of our Sarasola festivals with Starlight, Star Bright, I Wish I Was a Star Tonight, and Papa Come Dance With Me. While in quarantine, Joseph recorded for us a piece of his new solo play, That Lightning Bolt Didn't Tickle, My Dears, Meet Benjamin Franklin. I have often said that old men are fond of talking about themselves and their past actions, and I hope to do this today without boring you. <laughs> oh, no, yes, I'm very intelligent. If you are mumbling that I look a little peaked and ragged, well, I am quite old, you know. It's been hundreds of years. <laughs> I was born in poverty and obscurity, but... I rose to considerable wealth, fame, and happiness. I was an orphan boy, you know, on the streets of Boston and a printer in Philadelphia. But before I tell you the story of all of my achievements, and humbleness is not one of the 13 virtues that I lived my life by, I will tell you the number one answer to the number one question that people wonder about. I often get asked, what was I thinking in Independence Hall in 1776 when I would sit there and listen to the bellowing of Mr. John Adams and Mr. Thomas Jefferson, both who became presidents, of which I was most qualified to become. <laughs> the answer is this. I would often look out the window and I would remember those younger days when I would play with my little boy, Frankie. Oh, in the winter, we would go horse sleigh riding. In the summer, we would swim in the ponds. In the fall, we would play in the leaves. And in the spring, we would plant the corn and the beans. My favorite moments with Frankie was on winter nights when we would sit before the fireplace and drink hot apple cider. And I would read to him books. He loved books just as I do. I can't remember a time when I couldn't read. My Frankie died when he was four years old because I wouldn't vaccinate him. I've never forgiven myself and I've never mentioned his name to anyone ever since that day he died. History books don't talk about him because most people don't know about him. It was the greatest sorrow of my life and it was the greatest happiness. Now, if you will indulge me, I will tell you some other stories about my life. 